Good afternoon and welcome to the first ever Merrill Wealth Trading Live Q&A. The way that this is going to work is that followers and people on our newsletter will have the opportunity to send in questions ahead of this Q&A. We will answer the top questions live for everybody and if you guys have questions during the chat, you can put them here into the comments. I'll do my best to scroll through. We've already got a lot of people hopping on live. Uh, if there is some kind of a super chat on here, that'll probably bump it up higher. Let me see it easier, but uh, do your best to get questions in. But I've already curated the top questions from the newsletter, MaraWolf.com. If you're not already on it, go get on it now and from this weekend. So, top questions. Actually, the first thing is from one of our members. First, uh, he was saying, uh, this is from Matt. Matt was telling us that uh, he was able to delete negative influences and how that was so helpful to him. Now, deleting negative influences, negative influences can come from anywhere, can come from, in his case, it came from social media. And if something is negatively influencing your mental space, whether it's social media, stock twits, Instagram, Twitter, anything that is going to negatively impact your trading, the first thing that you need to do uh, when it comes to figuring out what sort of influences do you want to have, especially when you are, when you have a certain goal that you are after, you want to be successful at trading, great. You have a certain idea in your head, well, I want to hit the uh, 40% returns, 50% returns, 100% returns, whatever amount of returns you have. You want to quit your day job. You want to trade with confidence. Great. So you have your goal in mind. Now, what sort of things are going to help me get closer to this goal? Well, you take inventory. In Matt's case, uh, he took inventory and he saw that social media was creating all kinds of FOMO. It led him to, it, it served as a distraction and it led to comparisons. So when he was trying to place a trade and he saw his setup, he would then take a look at Instagram, scroll through stock twits and see, uh oh, this person is saying that this stock should do X. And meanwhile, I'm not even in that. I'm looking over here. Maybe I should go and trade that. And accumulation over the course of the year before he found us, what he found was, shit, I'm taking all these trades that have absolutely nothing to do with my system. So you know what he did? Deleted the social media. Right? That simple. Get rid of things that are negatively impacting you're trading. So that was one thing that, that helped Matt, the leading negative influences. And since he's been with us in our VIP program, uh, he's done exceptionally well. Next up, next question that, that came in. This one was from over the weekend. Question was, when did you feel that working on your mindset began to make a clear difference in your trading? This is an excellent question and it's a fairly common one too. The way that I would like to answer this question is that a, it works in a couple of different stages when you'll start to see mindset impacting your trading. Uh, right off the bat, if you've done absolutely nothing for mindset, you, you have no idea about what your beliefs are, you have no idea about what your goals are, any of that, the, the more basic stuff, you'll start to see an impact immediately, right? It, it, the analogy that I like to use is that you are weeding the garden, right? You're weeding your mental garden. So let's say you have a garden. You have not looked at this garden outside of your house in a very long time. So you go out there, you've got all these weeds that are growing everywhere. It's just a mess. So where the first impact is going to be 
Shit, I've got all these weeds everywhere. Let me start raking all this stuff. Let me start pulling out all the weeds. So the impact is immediate there, right? You, you, you see all this, you get frustrated, you start pulling out all the weeds. So you've got immediate impact from pulling out all the weeds. Great, now you're going to go to the store. You're going to buy some seeds. You're going to maybe get a new hose so that way you could start watering regularly. And then you're going to plant. Right. And so so that part is to relate this back to trading would be you're going through all the beliefs, your trading beliefs, your beliefs about money, perhaps self beliefs, taking inventory, seeing what's there, getting rid of what is not serving you and then going out and starting to figure out what will serve me. Start planting those. Right. Then you start watering it. Then you start watering it every day. Now it's time for patience. Right? You, you, you did all the weeding, you started putting in better sets of beliefs, you started to develop some of your goals. Now the game becomes patience because just like planting a garden, it's not going to grow overnight. We need to consistently do the things that will lead us towards the results that we want. So all of it has an impact. If you are brand new, then you'll start to see results immediately. If you are later on in your journey, then the game becomes a game of patience and consistency. Excellent question there. Let's see. Next up. Which is better in a choppy market? To buy on weakness or to wait for a breakout? This is actually a fairly common question and uh, a lot of you ask that question and the reason why I want to ask that question is because it's it's actually the wrong question to be asking. You should not be asking which is better in which uh, environment. That the the reason why is because it, it says that you should be switching your system depending on the environment. No, what you need to do is understand your system well enough on when to use this system or not. If you're just hopping around from system to system to system and you're not mastering anything, that's how 95% of people fail. And I've seen this time and time again through the years. What you want to do is figure out what system you like best. There's so many different systems out there. You don't need to reinvent the wheel or learn anything from scratch. Just find a system that you like that makes sense to you. You will customize any kind of trading system or methodology to yourself. And the reason why is so that way you can learn your own style, right? You're not reinventing the wheel, but you do have your own style. So great, you've got your style. Now, what you need to do is figure out when do I apply this system? How heavy should I bet and when? Those are some of the skills that we teach inside the Mauer Elite program. So uh, if you haven't checked out that program yet, you can go uh, go to my website, MauerWolf.com, click on membership, uh, and you can learn about that. But you, you need to develop the skills to be able to identify your system and when to apply that system. And not only when to apply the system, but how heavy to bet uh, given the market conditions, given your own performance, given the quality of what you're seeing in the market. Next question. What is a good and realistic amount to begin trading with? Again, there, this is another fairly common question. How much money should I begin trading with? The answer to that question, sip of coffee first. Uh, let, let me know what you think of this mug. I actually like this mug quite a bit. Now to answer the question, what is a good and realistic amount to begin trading with? The answer to that question is that the amount that you should begin trading with is an amount that you don't care if you were to lose it all. Most people, here's what most people do. Most people start out thinking that this is going to be my ticket to leave whatever I don't like doing, right? Like whether it's a day job, whether uh, I'm living somewhere that I don't want to live, whether I want to get something that I want. I'm going to use this money to get those things. And so I'm going to try to, to 
uh, to grow this money as quickly as they possibly can. And they take every dime that they have and they put it into the market. That is the exact wrong way to do it. What you want to do is to set aside a certain amount of capital that you're going to trade with, right? Like you have your living expenses and this is where budgeting starts to come in. So if you don't know about budgeting, I recommend that you start to learn about budgeting. That's something else that I can help you with too. But for right now, let's say that you have your budget. You have your budget for living expenses. Got to pay for your coffee. Got to pay for the lights, the computer, all of your regular living expenses. Next, what you want to do is start setting aside money regularly that's going to be for your trading. How much money should that be? Well, I recommend setting aside 10%, if you can, 10% from every single paycheck. Right? So let's say you're making, just to use round numbers, let's say that you're making $1,000 a week. Right? So you would be saving $100 a week and put that aside into your trading account. Allow this to build up over time. And then that money is earmarked for trading. So if you lose that money, and you will lose in the beginning, right? Everybody will lose in the beginning just for learning errors, right? Like, well, And when I say lose in the beginning, I'm talking about making mistakes. Mistakes like clicking the wrong button. You, you bought when you meant to sell something. You bought 100 shares when you meant to buy 10 shares. Like dumb errors like that. You're going to make them and you want to be making those kind of errors with a small amount of capital and money that you don't care about. So you're going to have that. Then as you begin to learn, as you begin to get better, you're going to keep on contributing to this account and the, the account itself will start to grow as well because you've gotten better and you've grown your skills at trading. Now, part of what you should do as well, and, and this is the part that a lot of people don't do and this is why people struggle for so long. This is why I struggled for so long in the beginning. I struggled for the first 10 years of trading. I've been trading now for about 25 years, as crazy as that sounds. What you want to do is set aside a budget, maybe another 5%, 10%, however much you can, for personal development. What does this mean? This means you're going to, to need to buy books, you're going to need to buy courses, you're going to need to get a mentor. Yes, you can learn from Instagram, you can hop on free live streams. There's free ways to get started. You could go on YouTube and watch videos. And that will, the, the problem with that is that it gets you so far. It's great to start, but it only gets you so far. And, and that's what got me so far in the beginning. Uh, I wasn't, uh, back then, tw 25 years ago, the, there was uh, no YouTube, learn how to trade videos. But part of what, what caused me to stay stuck for so long was that I didn't bother to go and sign up for courses or get mentors or get coaching until much later on. And then when I finally did, I went from struggling, boom bust, nervous, not exactly sure what I was going to do to being profitable inside a year, right? It's like night and day. It's like flipping a switch. And when you get that help from people that actually know what the hell they're doing, you'll be able to go from not knowing, nervous Nelly, to finally be able, being able to trade well, trade effectively, and start hitting your, your goals. So the amount that you need to start with, it can be any dollar amount, but start putting money away that's earmarked specifically for trading and money that you don't worry about if you lose it all. And that amount will, the actual dollar amount varies from person to person. All right, well, let's go through some of the these comments here. I see a lot of people commenting, waving. Hello, everybody. Let's see what questions I can pick up from in here. Okay, here's one. This one is from Santo Cheyenne. I have a trading plan, but I failed often to follow the trading plan. What should I do? Well, my first question to you, 
Santo Cheyenne would be, do you believe in this plan? Well, 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 what, uh, why, why are you not following the plan? I think that's the first question to ask. Why, why are you not following the plan? It, is it, well, like, well, what Matt went through that he had negative influences that, you know what, like, I, I'm, I have my plan and then I read something on social media and then all of a sudden the plan just flies right out the window. Is that it? Is it that you rolled out of bed this morning, quickly drafted up a plan and uh, you start to put that plan into action and then you realize, oh shit, I forgot X, Y, and Z and you don't really believe in the plan so the plan flies out the window for that reason? Well, you need to identify all the different reasons why you're struggling to follow the plan because if you actually believed in your plan, then it should be pretty easy to follow. There could be a variety of reasons why you are not following your plan. You need to identify those reasons. I'm actually doing a free webinar tomorrow inside uh, this group, uh, DM Tribe. Uh, if you know, Let me see well, where can I send you guys to, to go follow that. They're, they're, uh, they're on Discord. Uh, DMT is their Discord. I'm looking at it now. Uh, let's see where I could send you guys. If you're not following me on Twitter, you could go follow me on Twitter. He's bigger on Twitter, and we're sending people over there. That that's one way to get it. Uh, there's you know, that that that's the best way for right now. If you if you can't do that, then keep following, and we'll come up with other things in the future. But that, that's the best way for right now. Free webinar tomorrow after the close, uh, doing that. Let's see. Got time for maybe one or two more questions. All right. How to be satisfied with small profits while avoiding taking big risks? Well, well why aren't you satisfied with small profits? Uh, the, uh, the best, the key to unlocking most anything starts with a question. Uh, I believe it was Einstein that said that if he was given an hour to solve a problem, he would spend the first 55 minutes figuring out the right questions to ask, and he would spend the last five minutes figuring out the answer to that question. So, why are you not satisfied with small profits? Um, well, what, what's your larger goal? Right? Remember, we're earlier in the in the live stream. If you missed that part of the live stream, the recording will be up later on. So, I recommend that you go you go back and watch the recording. What is your goal? Start with the end point in mind. If my goal, let's say, I want to make 100% return this year. And I see that I'm making a half percent here, a half percent there. And I take an average of, let's say, 100 trades in a year. Well, if I'm making a half percent per trade and I take 100 trades in a year, then yeah, I have good reason to not be satisfied with that because my goal is 100. At best, I'll get to 50, and that's if I'm 100% right on every single trade. That's not going to happen. So what is your goal? And then you can start to reverse engineer how to get to that goal. It's uh, one point for you. Let's see. I think I've got time for one more question here. Question from M2Zang. Question is, should I start swing trading since day trading has more rush and I've been losing a lot? So that, that kind of goes back to, to the first question, uh, or actually no, to the that goes back to the second, the third question here, which was, which is better in a choppy market to buy weakness? It, it, it's basically the same thing. Should you start swing trading? Well, 
what basically what you want to do is to figure out what uh, any system any system needs to match these three things right there this is the magic success formula for trading right so write this down magic success formula for trading your system must match these three things it must match your beliefs your goals and your ability to execute. If any one of those three things are missing, then you are screwed. Now, again, beliefs, goals, ability to execute. Here's why. If you do not believe that a system will work, then it won't work. You are only able to act based on your beliefs. So if you believe that you can walk across the street blindfolded, make it across safely, then you'll do it. But if you don't believe that, then you will not be able to, you won't do it, right? It's kind of like that. So you have to believe in the system first. Now there's all different ways to acquire beliefs, right? It's not just sitting there and saying like, I believe. No, that's not how you get belief. That's how you uh try to fool yourself and you actually know what you believe and you uh you screw yourself that way so so don't do that you actually need to believe in the system that you are going to do beliefs number one your goals you need to get clear on your goals your goals could be whatever you want your goals to be hey of course monetary goals for your trading but you also have other goals right uh, how much time do you actually want to spend doing this um how much time are you able to dedicate? All those things fall into the into the realm of goals. So get clear on that part. And then what are you able to execute? Right? So uh, you mentioned swing trading day, uh, versus day trading. If Let's say you have a day job and you're not able to effectively execute day trades. Then system flies right out the window. I could give you the best day trading system in the world, but let's say uh, you have an office job and you're sitting there in the middle of the trade, trade executes, you're sitting there, sitting there, uh-oh, phone is ringing, boss is calling, hello, oh yeah, 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 well, one second. And meanwhile, the trade is running in your favor, but you can't effectively manage this trade now because you've got to go into a meeting. Your, your trading system has to be able to be executed at any time. Uh, you have to be able to execute your system well, uh, given any circumstance. It's one of the reasons why, personally, I prefer swing trading. And the reason why I prefer swing trading is because I'm able to sit on here and talk to you guys. I don't need to be looking at the charts all day long. But that's what works for me. You guys have to figure out what works for you. So anyhow, this has been fun. I'm going to wrap things up here. If you're not already on the newsletter, get on the newsletter, uh, marrowwealth.com. Uh, on there, well, with the email group, you'll be able to ask questions. We'll do more of these lives, answer them live just like this. We'll probably do another one uh, in the next week or two. And... Well, we give out a lot of free education. We give out free trade ideas with rationale in there, right? It's not meant to just be buy this, sell that. Like, I'm not trying to peddle anything. I just want to give you how I think through trades, what I'm seeing and why. And that's what you're going to get on the newsletter. So go to marrowwealth.com, sign up for the, for the newsletter. It's absolutely free. And I'll see you guys on here again real soon. Take care. Much love. Peace out, everybody.